call the uh, select board meeting to order. First up is public to be heard. It's on anything not on the agenda. Seeing nobody jumping off. Um, move into approval of the agenda. I'll move that you approve the agenda. We got Stephanie on there to second it. Yeah. I had to find that on mute, but I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And next up is questions from the public on anything that's on the ballots. We'll start online. Looks like we have none there. Well, Any I'm trying to find one here real quick. questions on anything? We got the report with its page two. Yeah. They're right there in the front. Woohoo! Oh, yeah, no problem. What's the reasoning behind looking at doing away with uh, town meeting? Nobody's doing away with town meeting. Well, Are you talking about the ballot for voting? Yeah. It's to get more participation. So right now, the only people that can vote on those items are the ones that show up at the Chandler Hall during the specified time of town meeting. Yeah. So it allows those questions to be put out Australian ballot and lets the whole town have an opportunity to, to vote using the whole duration of ways and time to vote. Town meeting will still take place. We can still get together and go through the report and ask questions and have the pie. So just to put it in perspective, we pulled numbers from the last five years or so just to give a sense. We've got about 3,700 registered voters. It goes yeah. up and down in that time frame. Yeah. The highest town meeting attendance in that period was in 19. We had 87 people, which is about 2.5% of all registered voters in that year. Yeah. And at that same year, you had 656 participate in the Australian ballot portion. I'm sorry, 600. 656, yeah. And that's fairly low. That's actually the second lowest number in that time frame. Uh, we've seen anywhere from 13 to 38% participation um, by ballot in those years and 1.2 to 2.5 from the floor. More than 80% of the questions in a given year are, from, are done by ballot anyway. The ones that aren't are like the budget committee elections. One year there were a bunch of them, sort of brought that percentage down, but it was to change the terms of the budget committee, to elect the budget committee, to hear reports of officers. So the business that's done isn't that. And you can still petition certain articles under state law. It's the same set of rules. You just vote on them by ballot versus on the floor. So that access remains the same as well. What do you do with, I don't know, in the past, like, you know, if there's an opening on a committee or something, you know, they'll take nominations from the floor. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with a nomination, you know, if the you know, Australian ballot's a few days later uh, and they got a nomination from the floor for somebody? Well, you wouldn't have that. The budget committee is the only one that's elected from the floor. So they would go by ballot like they were during COVID. So we had a two-year test run of doing it that way. Mm -hmm. And then if there's an opening at some point after that or there's no one elected, then the board appoints somebody until that next regular election, like it happens with select board or anything else that's elected. So those process elements work the same. You just fill it on the front end a little differently. Um, but every other committee member is appointed in March, usually by the board or reappointed, depending on. Did you have any other questions for what was on the ballot or just trying to understand that one piece? Yeah, that piece, I guess. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be a whole lot of discussion on budgets at the town meetings. Yeah. yeah. Well, the budgets themselves are up for vote, so we yeah. don't go through the budgets line by line, but, correct? No, but sometimes people have questions. Yeah. We will answer them if we can. Any other questions on it? Do you have questions? Just wanted to see what all this fun was about. <laughs> I'll ask one related to budgeting here. I'm not sure. <laughs> you can. Um, the assess the reassessments of people's properties or has is or has happened or something in that state. It's underway. Yeah. Can you comment on what kind of 
percentage change you you're seeing in what's been uh, been done so far? I haven't gotten any information on it. N not yet. They're doing the some of the commercial properties now. They're a big part of the puzzle. And then once they get through that, they'll enter. I think. Um, what's largely a phase of sort of the grievance process where people will get notice of any changes of value. There's a chance to discuss that with our contractor and, and the town folks before they set sort of final values and the grand list is based on that. So there isn't any update in terms of the grand list is gonna do X, Y, or Z in terms of change. The indicators and what we're seeing in other towns make it likely that that grand list is gonna grow in value. The thing will be what's the ultimate percentage. Mm -hmm. But that usually means that your tax rate goes down mm -hmm. overall. And some of it comes into play with properties. Like if you have a property that you just built and it just got assessed, it's using the current market conditions, your change in value should be a lot less than if I had a property that nothing has changed on and the last time it was valued was the last time we did an assessment. So, Part of my behind the scenes questioning is when school taxes are being looking at jumps, <laughs> you don't really know what kind of, I mean, you're, you're looking at a percentage increase on what kind of taxes those will be, yep. but you don't really know what your assessed values are and what the overall percentage is, or, or will that fluctuate as well depending on what whatever the assessed values come in. Yeah, so you, your assessed value is going to drive what your per, what your tax is to your property specific. And it's, you know, there's no way the grand list is going to shrink, right? Because the market conditions are so much different. But at the same time, remember that the budget you pass is spread across that entire grand list value. So we don't keep the same so, rate. So the budget is set at an amount, not necessarily a percentage. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That the dollar value of the budget you vote on at town meeting gets spread across the grand list. Okay. So if it's a larger grand list, you should have a smaller rate. But that doesn't necessarily mean your taxes are going to depending on kind of when your property was last valued it'll have that a difference in impact on your rate. And can you comment on, or on dollar value, assessments? Not I, we're, we've done it at this time. How many other communities have done it at this time as well? How much of the state is going to be affected by sort of this unknown assessed value? Well, uh, towns are all in their own cycle okay. and in their own picture. Um, how many are going through it right now? I don't know. Okay. A lot. You know, because yeah. most towns, what used to happen is you'd go eight, ten years like we did between assessments, and now they're pushing you to do them more often or come out with a model to value them that can be adjusted, you know, using the software or, or a formula okay. that's in there so we don't get these huge swings like what we're going to go through. We have heard they're booking out three, four, five years, depending on the firm. Just that's how many towns and what the availability of the firms mm -hmm. is. So even if we were to start today, it'd be a few years before you start what's really a 18 to 24 month process. Is there a general average that for other towns that have you know, gone through the process, say the last four or five years, on a percent, percentage increase? Or? Not that I've seen a general average. Post pandemic, with the way the real estate market changed. Folks yeah. who are reassessing after that have seen grand list growth depending on that. Yeah. Um, there have been times where towns have done it and seen the opposite. The cycle before last, Springfield for example, saw its grand list yeah. actually oh. take a hit value. There isn't any indication that that's going to be our... No, it was Springfield was... Reality. This was, yeah, pre-pandemic <laughs> when they were at the... It's my hometown, so I feel like I can pick on it a little bit, but... Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was kind of when they were scraping the belly of the plane. Yeah. And now even then, they've since gone again, or at least done some partial reassessments, and they're seeing those values change. Yeah. So it's pretty rare to see the, the value decrease these days. Yeah. And, and we don't do anything on this board. We don't have anything to do with the school budget or those rates. 
you know, kind of what that impact is. That's a, they have their own hearing, anybody, that's, that's this week also, that's right? Week Thursday. Any other questions we can answer? Not seeing any in the room, any online? I think you have something in the chat. Oop. Let me see. Good eyes. Mm -hmm. This is the place to ask. Oh, hang on. User error. I'm going to get you. Ask about the purpose of the. What the library is asking for. Why so much? What do they do with the funds they awarded last year and what do they need so much money for? Uh, I mean, you could ask that the library trustees and the library director work together to put that that budget in terms of the creation, and then it gets worn with the others. It's an interesting Vermont, and maybe other states have it too, where town owns the building, does the article stuff, raises the taxes, but the administration or planning for the library is done by the separately elected trustees in their place. So it's a it's a weird system. Um, in terms of, of that, but if there's a specific question, you're waiting a response. Um, I don't know if there's a specific line. We may know, like the health insurance they get from us, so we could speak to that. Same thing with property and casualty insurance; those are ones we pool together. So if it's a question like that, we we could probably handle that. But if it's more detailed, operational, that might still be best directed to them. I don't recall the increase in the library budget, but I don't recall it being this dramatic, right? But this is asking about. The purpose of the funds yeah. of what they're asking for. So the library budget that we see has their all their operating costs in it. Their payroll is in there, their utilities, all their the the actual expenses of operating the library. Is that the what the question is, Tammy? see a red light, but I can keep an eye on it here. She's waiting for a response nope. from them. Yep. Okay. Uh, if you look in the town report, you'll see the library's budget. It has it broken out what the expenses are and then it gives you the under the revenue section it should give you the source of funds that they're getting to pay those expenses and you'll see that some of that is a budget line item from that the town raises from property taxes yeah page 23 and 24 of the report if you, and if you have it on the budget it's right after the general fund or yeah, right after the general fund. If you use the version online. And then if you have any questions, we can either connect you or it sounds like you already know how to get a hold of them, but shoot us an email or give Judy a call. We'll get you, get you routed. Any other questions? Not seeing any, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. Oh, <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We are done. <laughs>